Hello guys, Monkey Boy here. So we are back again developing Immortal Empires to see where the end result of Immortal Empires could be. Today we're moving into completely unknown territory here and we're actually going to be going to Ind and Koresh. We do know that Ind and Koresh will be opening up at some point within Immortal Empires life cycle. So let's open it up right now, put some uh, legendary lords in there and see what happens. I will not be talking about the potential DLC factions that will be coming in the future. So I'm not going to talk about specific Koresh and Ind Legendary Lords. I will be putting those in a separate video later on in the future. But before we get into Ind and Koresh, I kind of forgot someone in the last episode. So I want to quickly go back to Bretonia. And I completely forgot about the Red Duke. So let's add the Red Duke back into Mulasson. I don't think I really need to give an explanation here. Same as Boros Topbringer. He's been in the game since Warhammer 1. And really should be turned into a Legendary Lord at this point. So let's just pop him in there where he belongs and let's just move on to Ind and Koresh. So let's get the legendary lords that I've already spoken about in the past on this channel. So the first legendary lord that I want to be talking about will be the champion of Slanesh, T'Challa. So T'Challa is an extremely mutated high elf who basically was sold by her family to a demon prince of Slanesh and the demon prince forced her into marriage. T'Challa was never in love with the Demon Prince and she had a bitterness for her family. So she went back to Ulthuan and killed them for betraying her and then fled to the Chaos Wastes. Her Demon Prince husband was very angry about this as T'Challa just ran away from him. So he went to Slanesh to ask if he can force T'Challa back to him. Slanesh said that he will not force T'Challa back to the Demon Prince. But if she does not return or if the Demon Prince is still alive, then she will never gain demonhood and T'Challa also produces some sort of special liquid that makes people go crazy and that's basically the law of T'Challa. She is now in the Chaos Wastes commanding one of the most powerful Slanesh warbands there are but it doesn't say northern or southern Chaos Wastes it just says that she's in the Chaos Wastes. So I thought putting her in the southern Chaos Wastes considering there's also a little snippet in the end times that says that she devastated Ind so it makes perfect sense for her to be very close to Ind. I am going to be putting her in the settlement of Oakham's Forever Maze on the east side of the southern Chaos Wastes. This will be a nice interesting start for Slanesh. She can obviously go into the rest of the Chaos Waste and meet up with Kairos or she could go north into the Southlands or she could go uh, even further east into Ind and Koresh. Now the next character I want to be moving on to would be Aslin, the commander of the High Elf Fleet. He will also likely be coming alongside the Slanesh DLC and he will likely be starting in the Eastern Colony Islands in the settlement of the Tower of Sun. Again, this gives him many options being in the middle of the ocean. You can go north and meet up with Imric into the Darklands or you can go slightly east into the Kingdoms of Ind which is your closest option or you could travel a little bit further to the west where you can go into the Southlands and you've also got a sea lane close by if you want to go and invade Cathay or Koresh. So again, very similar to like Count Noctulus, for example, you have lots of different options um, from your starting location so you can attack pretty much anywhere. But if Aslan was going to be introduced into the game and placed in the Eastern Colonies, I think you have to open Ind up, mainly for the AI to actually go somewhere. Because currently in the game, the Eastern Colony AI doesn't really do anything. They just sort of sit there and everyone ignores them. In fact, if I was to play as the Eastern Colonies with um, the Mixer's Character Unlocker mod, you don't actually meet anyone for maybe a hundred turns unless you go out and find them yourself. So I think opening up Ind is a must in this situation. So moving on to the final Legendary Lord that I've already... Well, I've not actually mentioned him in the, my prediction video. I couldn't actually think of a legendary lord for the Dark Elves. But I've come to the conclusion, someone mentioned it in the comments and I was thinking, of course, why not? But Shadowblade. I think Shadowblade would be a great addition for uh, the Dark Elves. And putting him in the Kingdoms of Ind, where there probably are a lot of assassin-like characters, I think would make a lot of sense for him. The only other option I could see them doing is 
maybe putting Shadow Blade where Loki of Felhar is and putting Loki of Felhar in Ind because we know that he does raid the kingdoms of Ind. But for now, I'm going to put Shadow Blade there. I think it'll be a great start location for a Dark Elf faction. You obviously, like I said, have Loki of Felhar relatively close to you for a potential ally. But apart from that, there's going to be so many enemies surrounding you. You're going to have all of Cathay from the north probably crash at some point in the future you'll have the high elves so i'm going to put shadow blade slap bang in the middle of end just on the west coast so you are closer to the rest of the dlc that will potentially be coming so closer to the high elves and closer to sanesh i think it'll be a good place for him to start now moving on to the new legendary lords this is the first time i'm talking about these ones on the channel and the first one i want to be talking about is Li dao the fire dragon and the final child of the dragon emperor of cathay but i think he will be dealing with some sort of Koresh incursion and he has been sent slightly further south into the kingdoms of Koresh to deal with the snake men there. So we don't have any territory names yet so I can't name that for you but I think he will be starting on the western coast of Koresh right in the middle. Uh, it will make sense he has just sailed down the river there from his normal starting territory into the lands of Koresh where he is going to be dealing with the Koresh incursion. I think they'll have a confederation opportunity again. I don't think it will be a dual start location. I think he's already very close to his home territory, so it doesn't really make much sense there. But a confederation option would be nice for him. Now, moving on to the last legendary lord, I think that we could be seeing. And I think it would be nice to put another coronate faction down here. We know that Koresh are likely to be Chaos Worshippers, so it makes sense that demon incursions are likely to happen down there. So putting any one of the four Chaos Gods down there would probably make sense, but I've already got four Nurgle factions on the campaign map. We've just added a Slanesh one, and to be honest, Slanesh only really likes humans and elves, so putting them... Back. Although Snake Men, maybe he could have some sort of fetish against the Snake Men, who knows... But I think Corn would be the most likely here. You can obviously have an invasion going into Cathay, which will give more threats to Cathay because at the moment Cathay is very safe as a country. And it would be good just to put some more threats in from all angles. And the character that I think would be going there will actually be Arbol the Undefeated. Arbol was the Cornate Legendary Lord that worked with T'Challa to take over Ind. So putting him in Koresh I think will be a very good place for him. It will give him a nice ground to stage his attacks before going into Ind later on. And then it also gives you the options to use the sea lane close by if you want to go to Nagarond or Lustria. Or you can just go north into Cathay. Again, many different options, many different factions to face. I think it would be a great start location for him. And that's going to be it so far for Indian Koresh. Obviously, there's still a lot of spaces left in both of those countries. But we need to leave them open for the hopeful race packs that will be coming in the future. I think we're now very close to seeing what the completion of Immortal Empires is going to look like. I don't think I'm going to be visiting any other continents now in this series. I might just do one more episode where I just look at the entire map as a whole and place a few characters here and there. But I don't think there's any continents now which really need fleshing out. So what I'm going to be doing, like I said, one more episode filling out all of those empty little places all across the map. And then after I've done that, I'm going to go into a deep dive on the races that I think we'll be seeing. And I'll be adding their potential start locations onto the map there. But until then, guys, thank you very much for watching. Please leave your comments in the comment section down below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.